Last August, I published a very bullish article on Hims and Hers, and a week later, I uploaded a video talking about why the stock is a generational buying opportunity. Since then, shares have returned more than 80%, and that's where I sold my position in Hims and took my profits. My name is Triado, and this channel is all about finding the companies of tomorrow. In this video, we'll be covering Hims and Hers Q1 results, why I sold my position, and what I think about the company moving forward. With that said, let's take a look at Him stock. First, let's talk about what Hims and Hearst does as a company. A few years ago, current CEO Andrew Dudem was having a nice family dinner when all of a sudden, his sister confronted him about his face. She mentioned that Dudem's face was ashy, wrinkly, and full of pimples and so she grabbed Dudem's credit card and insisted on buying some skincare products so her brother could look a lot better. The credit card bill from his sister's shopping came in at $300 worth of women's products, which Dudem considers to be be an outrageous price point for a normal guy. Through this intervention, Dudem realized that men's wellness products were pretty much inaccessible, unaffordable, and stigmatized. In addition, he realized that the traditional healthcare system is highly inefficient and dysfunctional. For example, you go to the doctor's office and you're asked to sit in the waiting room for hours. In addition, doctors are rarely transparent with pricing and it's common to see a few surprises in the final bill. These issues inspired Dudem to launch Hims in 2017, a wellness brand for men, and the following year, its women's wellness brand Hers was also launched. In essence, Hims and Hers is a digitally native, fully verticalized telehealth platform that provides consumers access to high quality medical care. The company's mission is to help the world feel great through the power of better health by connecting patients to a highly qualified provider network as well as enabling access to treatments for a broad range of conditions, mainly in the general wellness, sexual health, skin care, and hair care categories. The company offers over-the-counter drugs, prescriptions, and other supplemental products. There are too many items to list here, but the picture here shows Hims flagship hair care kit which includes shampoo, minoxidil, finasteride, and biotin gummies. And here you can also see its recently launched heart mints which helps with erectile dysfunction. Additionally, through the Hims and Hers mobile apps, consumers can communicate with a virtual care team, watch guided programs and educational content as well as shop Hims and Hers products. And ultimately, Hims and Hers is trying to elevate the patient experience by focusing on four strategic pillars, namely building the world's most trusted brand in health and wellness, providing a technology platform for seamless customer and provider experience, introducing innovative products and personalized solutions, as well as emphasizing clinical experience to reinforce the product and service quality. Now that we understand what Hims and Hers does, Let's talk about the financials of the company, starting with its growth metrics. So growth has just been phenomenal. As you can see, revenue for 2022 was $527 million, which is up 94% year over year. And Q1 revenue was $191 million, which is 88% year over year. I don't think I've seen any company capable of growing at high double digits consistently for such a long stretch. I mean, just look at the growth of the company. Despite tough year over year comps, and usually as a company becomes larger, growth is expected to decelerate but in the case of Hims and Hers, growth is not showing any signs of slowing down. So to put into perspective of how fast the company is growing, its 2022 revenue of $527 million is more than double the expected 2022 revenue projected by management in its SPAC merger investor presentation. So it just shows how great the product is and how management is able to execute at such a high level. But let's move on. Strong revenue growth were in large part due to strong growth in online recurring revenue. The beauty of the Hims and Hers business model is that the company focuses on treating conditions that require medication on a recurring basis and ongoing care from healthcare providers. And that is why over 90% of revenue come in the form of online recurring subscription revenue. And as you can see, online revenue in 2022 was 503 million, which is up 94% year over year. And this is driven by the growth in subscribers and the acquisitions of Honest Health and Apostrophe. On the other hand, Q1 revenue 
revenue was 184 million which is up 96% year over year and this is due to higher subscriber count, higher average order value as well as higher order volumes. And as of Q1, online revenue makes up 97% of total revenue with the remaining 3% coming in from the wholesale channel. So again, online revenue growth was due to the increasing number of subscribers in the platform. Hims ended 2022 with about 1 million subscribers, which is up 80% year over year. And subscriber count continued to increase in Q1, which was 1.2 million, which is up 87% year over year. And the increase in subscribers was primarily due to increased marketing expenses higher traffic to its platforms as well as higher conversion rates as a result of improved on-site and customer onboarding experience. The CFO also mentioned that online revenue growth benefited from higher monthly online revenue per average subscriber which was up 6% year over year to $55. And higher revenue per subscriber means that the average subscriber is spending more on the platform which is reflected in the company's land and expand strategy. I also do want to point out that even though multi-month subscribers make up a larger proportion of the total subscriber base, its growth is much faster than single month subscribers and therefore the share of multi-month subscribers increased to an all-time high of 75% in the first quarter. And this is important because it means a more sticky revenue stream for hims and hers and it also means that the company is not growing because of one-time buyers but also because of repeat customers. Moving on, as a result of subscriber growth, hims and hers produce higher net orders and in 2022, net orders was 6.1 million which is up 75% year over year and in Q1, it was about 2 million which is up 70% year over year. Here we can see that average order value which is the light blue line, it continues to trend upwards and the increase in AO V was driven by increased uptake from product bundles as well as higher price points from multi-month subscriptions. So despite consumers feeling the pain of high inflation, they are actually spending more on the platform which is a testament to the company's strong value proposition and brand resilience. Finally, we have the wholesale segment and wholesale revenue in 2022 was 24 million which is up 92% year over year and this is due to the addition of new retail partners as well as higher volume of wholesale orders. In Q1, however, wholesale revenue was 7 million which is down 9% year over year and this is due to a few large initial orders from retail partners in Q1 of 2022 that were not repeated in Q1 this year. I wouldn't worry about the fluctuation in wholesale revenue as this segment only makes up less than 5% of total revenue. And I'm more interested in the growth of online revenue as it has higher margins and stability due to the recurring nature of revenue from subscriptions. So to summarize, Hims and Hearst is growing at an incredible pace and as you can see, the company is growing at high double-digit growth rates over the past few quarters consistently. Not only is the company acquiring more subscribers, it is also retaining higher quality customers in the form of multi-month subscriptions as well as higher revenue per customer. So all the key performance indicators are showing strong growth for Hims and Hearst but I still believe the company has a lot more room to grow. As you may not know, the healthcare industry is massive but has yet to be disrupted. In the US alone, national health expenditure was $4.3 trillion in 2021, which is about $13,000 per person and accounted for 18.3% of gross domestic product. As a disruptive telehealth company, Hims and Hearst is trying to redefine how people receive healthcare and based on the size of the healthcare industry and based on the company's growth so far, I think Hims and Hearst has a long growth runway ahead. Telehealth adoption is inevitable and it is growing by the day and although it won't completely replace in-person doctor visits, telehealth is likely to be a growing component of the healthcare system which should benefit telehealth platforms like Hims and Hers. And as you can see, according to McKinsey, up to $265 billion worth of care services currently delivered in clinics, facilities, and physicians' offices could shift to the home by 2025. Hims and Hers can also expand to other categories including testosterone boosters insomnia and weight management and so on and this should not only expand the company's market opportunity but also encourage existing subscribers to spend more on the platform which should increase revenue per subscriber. In addition with 1.2 million subscribers as of Q1 and 330 million people in the USA, Hims and Hearst has a market share of just 0.3% which means a lot more opportunity for the company to gain market share. But more importantly I think there's massive opportunity for Hims and Hearst 
numbers to expand internationally. I mean, there are another 7.6 billion people living outside the US, which could serve as a catalyst for future growth for the company. And that includes regions such as Europe, Canada, Australia, and Indonesia. Now, turning to profitability, 2022 gross profit was 409 million, which is a 78% gross margin. And in Q1, it was 153 million, which is an 80% gross margin. So gross margins has been trending upwards as you can see right here and this is due to increased order fulfillment volume from affiliated pharmacies which resulted in lower product and packaging costs compared to third-party pharmacies. The increase in gross margin is also due to a higher adoption of multi-month subscriptions as well as a greater share of online channel revenue which typically has a higher margin profile than the wholesale channel. And despite the already high gross margins, we could expect margins to continue to improve moving forward. So during the Q1 earnings call, CFO Yemi Okupe mentioned that the company has surpassed 60% of orders fulfilled through its affiliated pharmacies. And he also mentioned that the company expects over 80% of its orders to be fulfilled by affiliated pharmacies by year end. So as Hims and Hers transition to 100% in-house order fulfillment, I expect incremental improvement in gross margins in the next few quarters. Moving down the income statement, operating loss in 2022 was $69 million, which is a negative 13% operating margin. And in Q1, it was negative 11 million operating loss, which is a negative 6% operating margin. Margin. Although operating margins have been improving over the last few quarters, I do want to point out that marketing expenses actually increased 102% year over year in Q1, which outpaces revenue growth by 14 percentage points. So this reflects management's priority to increase brand awareness and maximize new subscriber growth. And part of the reason why management is increasing marketing expense is due to the fact that the company has a payback period of less than a year. And this enables him and her to quickly reinvest the proceeds back into the business for growth. But still, the big concern is that marketing expense is growing faster than revenue, which means an over-dependence on paid marketing expense for growth. With that being said, the path to sustain profitability is well underway for Hims and hers as the company achieves adjusted EBITDA profitability. So in 2022, adjusted EBITDA was negative 16 million, which is a negative 3% margin. But in Q1, it was $6 million which is a 3% positive adjusted EBITDA margin. As you can see, adjusted EBITDA margins have been improving over the last few quarters, which shows operating leverage for the company. That said, there are two things that I really like about Hims and Hers business model. First, the company has a high gross margin profile of 80%, which shows high earnings potential. And secondly, profitability metrics across the board are all improving, which shows operating leverage. With these two elements, I think Hims and Hers has a truly scalable business model, and this should reward shareholders in the long run. Turning to its financial health, Hims and Hers has a strong balance sheet with $184 million of cash and short-term investments with virtually no debt. The surge in cash level in 2021 is due to proceeds as a result of going public through its SPAC combination with Oak Tree Acquisition Corp. However, its net cash position has been dropping over the last few quarters and this is due to its recent apostrophe and honest health acquisitions. In 2022, free cash flow was negative 29 million, which is a negative 6% free cash flow margin. Hims and Hers has been pretty much free cash flow negative, but the cash burn is relatively low compared to its high net cash position, and therefore the low cash burn was not an issue. But now the company is focusing on profitability and being free cash flow positive, which is why we see a free cash flow of $9 million in Q1, which is a free cash flow margin of 5%. In my opinion, I think we'll see free cash flow continue to improve from here as the company achieves economies of scale and operating leverage. It's also worth mentioning that given the recent rally in share price, I think it won't be surprising if the company issues an equity offering to raise cash to accelerate growth, including expanding its product line, entering into new markets, or even acquiring another company in the telehealth sector. Now turning to Outlook, management provided the following guidance. Q2 revenue is expected to be 200 to 205 million, which is a year-over-year -year growth rate of 76% to 81%. 
For the full year, revenue is expected to be 810 to 830 million, which is up 54 to 58% year over year. The midpoint of its revenue guidance is actually $75 million higher than the prior guidance given by management in its Q4 earnings release. So to raise guidance by that much is a testament to the underlying strength of the business. On the other hand, adjusted EBITDA for Q2 is expected to be 4 to $7 million, which is a 2 to 3% adjusted EBITDA margin. And for the full year, adjusted EBITDA is expected to be 25 to $30 million, which is a 3 to 4% adjusted EBITDA margin. So the only caveat to the raise guidance is that while revenue is expected to be $75 million higher, the midpoint guidance of adjusted EBITDA is expected to be only $2.5 million higher compared to the previous guidance given by management. So my guess is that the extra revenue earned is likely going to be used for marketing expenses in order to grow subscribers which has always been management's priority. With that said, there are three underlying themes that will be key success factors for Hims and Hearst to achieve its targets, including an 85% long-term retention rate, expanding its product categories, as well as a payback period of less than a year. Also of important note, management maintained its long-term guidance of 20 to 30% long-term adjusted EBITDA margin, as well as a gross margin profile in the mid 70s. The company also expects revenue of at least one $1.2 billion and an adjusted EBITDA of at least $100 million by 2025. But I think these targets are quite conservative given the financial performance of the business in the last three years. And besides, management has a history of sandbagging guidance, so I won't be surprised if management blow past expectations like they always do. You can see why that is so if you head on to Seeking Alpha and see the company's actual revenue as compared to consensus estimates. I think management has beaten and raise guidance in every quarter as a public company and not only that, the company has beaten endless expectations in all its quarters by a wide margin. So really strong business outlook for hims and hers in my opinion. So let's now talk about the company's valuation. So just a recap on what the stock price looks like. Here we can see that two years ago the stock price went parabolic during the spec craze which caused the price to reach $25 a share. And then the following year the stock dropped by about 90% from its all-time highs to just $3 a share. And since then, the stock rallied 300% plus to $12 a share and today it dipped to just $10 a share. So lots of volatility in Hims and her stock. And although the stock has recovered substantially from its May lows last year, I think there's still more upside potential for the stock in the long term. So let's take a look at Hims and Hearst valuation multiple. And since Hims and Hearst is not profitable yet, I will be using its EV to gross profit multiple to assess how attractive shares are trading currently on a historical basis. As you can see, Hims and Hearst traded as high as 55 times EV to gross profit multiple, but valuation has compressed ever since to a much more reasonable and attractive range. So currently, Hims and Hearst trades at an EV to gross profit multiple of 4.1 times, which is incredibly cheap for a company growing at high double digit rates. Now let's look at how Hims and Hearst is valued compared to some of its health tech peers. As you can see, Hims and Hearst seems to be valued more expensively compared to 23andMe, GoodRx, Teladoc, and Mwell. On the other hand, Hims and Hearst is valued cheaply compared to the telehealth networking platform Doximity. But here's the take, Hims and Hearst is growing much faster than any of its peers including Doximity. So I think Hims and Hearst is extremely undervalued compared to peers when we consider Hims and Hearst growth rate and potential. If we head on to Seeking Alpha, we can see Wall Street analyst rating on the company and they have an average buy rating with four strong buy recommendations and two buy recommendations with no sell recommendations at all. And if we scroll down right here, we can see the average price target set by analysts which is about $12.91, which represents a 22% upside from current prices. And the street high target is about $18, which is about 80% upside from here. So I did a DCF model as well on Hims and Hearst, and before I show you 
my model, let me talk about management's long-term guiding financial principles, which I will take into account when putting in my assumptions that drive my DCF model. So here we can see that management expects a 20 to 30% long-term adjusted EBITDA margin. And since that's similar to free cash flow, I'm going to use that as him's and hers long-term free cash flow margin profile. But just to be conservative, I will take the lower end of the range. Gross margin on the other hand is expected to be in the mid 70s. So I'll use a long-term gross margin profile of 75% for the company. And finally, the company expects a revenue of at least $1.2 billion by 2025, which I think could be too conservative. But anyways, I will try to be as conservative as possible in my assumptions. So here is my DCF model and here are my key assumptions. If we head back to Seeking Alpha, we can see consensus revenue estimates for the company and you can see the growth rates set by analysts in the next few years. So analysts expect revenue to be $1.25 billion in 2025, which is in line with management's guidance. So I'm gonna take analyst estimates for revenue growth for the first three years and plug it into my model right here. And then I'm just gonna gradually drop it down to 12% by the end of 2032. For cost of revenue, I'm targeting a long-term gross margin of 75%. So cost of revenue will gradually increase from 20.5% to 25% percent by the end of 2032 which leaves a gross margin profile of 75 percent for operating expenses i expect it to drop to 55 percent of revenue as the company achieves operating leverage income tax will stay at 20 percent of operating income after the company turns gap profitable depreciation and amortization will be kept at 1.5 percent stock-based compensation on the other hand will just drop down to five percent of revenue i think the company has a capital light business model which which is why I set capital expenditures at 0.5% of revenue for all the years. And for changes in networking capital, I'm just gonna keep it constant at 1%. So with these assumptions, I arrive at a revenue of $3.4 billion and a free cash flow margin of 21%, which is at the low end of management's long-term adjusted EBITDA target of 20 to 30%. And if we assume a discount rate of 12% and a perpetual growth rate of 2%, we arrive at an intrinsic value per share of $20.66 for hims and hers. So as you can tell, it is much higher than the average analyst price target. And based on the current price of $10.57, this represents an upside of about 96% for investors today. So yes, based on my DCF model, which I think is quite conservative, I think hims and hers stock is quite undervalued. And maybe that is why institutions have also been buying shares of hims and hers aggressively on the way down and even up after the recent rally that we saw. So that is quite a bullish signal for investors today. It is also great to know that insiders own 14.5% of shares outstanding. So it's a great sign that insiders have skin in the game. It is also worth noting that there's a stock option award for the CEO to maintain share prices above $10 a share. So according to the proxy statement, the compensation committee approved a grant of stock option award to purchase 2 million shares to Mr. Dudem with an exercise price of $5.01 per share that vests in four equal tranches. And on each annual anniversary date after February last year, 25% of the shares subject to the option will vest and become exercisable. Provided that Mr. Dudem is still employed and the share price is more than $10 a share. In other words, it is CEO Andrew Dudem's best interest to keep share prices above $10 a share for at least the next four years in order for his stock options to be exercisable. So because of this, I think downside is quite limited from here. With that said, even though I think shares are quite undervalued today, I'm actually short-term bearish on the stock. So I've actually sold my position in HIMS at $12 a share, largely because of the challenging macroeconomic environment that we're seeing right now, as well as the fact that we just seen a 300% plus rally in the stock in such a short period of time, which is why I think there will be a correction coming soon. In addition, in Q1, the company actually beat estimates and raised guidance and instead of rallying past its previous highs, the stock actually dropped by 10% the following day. So I think there was just too much optimism baked into the stock 
which is why I think it's a great time to take profits. Don't get me wrong, I love the business but I don't necessarily like the stock which is why I'm gonna stay on the sidelines and be patient right here and see if the price drops back to $8 a share which is where I'm going to buy the stock back again. Turning to the risks of the company, in my view competition is the biggest risk for hims and hers. Firstly, Hims and Hers primarily sell generic drugs with no IP protection. As such, there's low barriers to entry and it's easy for copycat brands to find a drug manufacturer and launch their own brands. Secondly, other telehealth companies such as Teladoc and Mwell may also expand to direct-to-consumer healthcare. Lastly, it's worth considering that incumbents such as CVS and Walgreens are much larger than Hims and Hers and therefore they can leverage their scale and offer something similar to Hims and Hers. Although they'll be slow to innovate, it is still a risk worth considering. The second major risk for HIMSS is supply risk. So while patients enjoy the benefits coming from telehealth services, physicians did not feel the same way. So based on a McKinsey study, 60% of patients find telehealth convenient as opposed to only 36% of physicians. In addition, 40% of patients claim that they will continue to use telehealth after the pandemic while physicians expect virtual visits to be only 10% of their total visits, which is why only 14% of physicians have invested in telehealth. So these different perspectives may mean physician supply shortages for telehealth offerings like Hims and Hers, which may slow down the company's platform growth. So to wrap up this video, I think Hims and Hers is one of those rare companies that is growing rapidly in an emerging industry that is run by great management and have strong competitive advantages. This channel is all about finding the companies of tomorrow and based on what I've seen so far, I think Hims and Hers is going to be a dominant player in the healthcare sector in the next decade given its innovative telehealth platform, its incredible value proposition and excellent branding. For those reasons, I'm long-term bullish on the company. However, given the recent rally that we've seen and given the challenging macroeconomic environment, I think the risk to reward is not attractive in the short term. While I do think shares are still undervalued, I'm waiting for a larger correction before buying back into the stock. So in short, I'm long-term bullish but short-term bearish. With that said, that is the end of the video. Please let me know what you think about him stock in the comment section down below. And if you do find value in this video, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss future video. That's it. Thank you guys and I'll see you guys on the next video.